This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Hope you're all doing well out there. Today I'm very excited to announce a new preset from the Creative Dojo called Typeflow. This is a new After Effects preset that makes it very easy to create very simple, clean, modern, and sleek title animations very quickly within After Effects. No keyframes required, no tweaking required, no need to mess around with text animators expressions. It's very responsive, lots of options. And the best part is this is actually a name your own price preset. So you can pretty much pay whatever you want for this preset. And if you find this preset helpful, feel free to buy me a cup of coffee or something like that. So let me show you guys what this preset can do. So a lot of times whenever we're animating text within After Effects, we would love to think that we're animating epic trailer titles or title scenes or awesome intro reveals or whatever. But the reality for a lot of people, including myself, is that we find ourselves spending a lot of time on animating other things, other simpler things, such as call out titles, title transitions, title slides, um, infographics, a lot of simpler things where you want some sort of subtle animation, but you don't want things to be kind of boring, like, you know, a basic fade in, fade out or a scale or a tracking animation. Um, but you don't want things to be static either. You want some sort of subtle animation that's easy and quick to do. That doesn't make it look boring, but you don't want to spend too much time on it because you have a lot of things to do. And so this is kind of where Typhlo comes in to be very responsive and adaptive to whatever you need to create very clean, beautiful, easing overshoot animations. So for example, I have this title right here. It's not really doing anything right now. So let's go ahead and apply Typhlo to it. So if you install Typhlo correctly, it should be in your After Effects directory and your presets directory. And if you go in there, restart After Effects, then go to the effects and presets go to the presets folder, find the creative dojo folder and go ahead and drag or double click on type flow and add it to your existing text layer. And just like that, within one click, we get this really nice, beautiful easing intro and outro with a nice overshoot, very simple and lots of controls. And so this is basically type flow right here. And this is the controller on top. We actually have two categories here, the intro and the outro, which control the intro animation and the outro animation. And as you can see, it's adaptive. It's based on the in point and out point of the layer. So you don't need to mess around with any keyframes. It adapts to the length of your layer right here. So if I move forward, the animation will start at this point in time, come in and then animate out. It's very fluid, it's very adaptive. And so if you go into the intro, we can actually enable the intro or disable it altogether. So if we disable it, nothing will happen in the intro. And then we have our basic controls. And these are kind of based off of Dan Ebert's kind of overshoot expressions. So mad props to him. This preset wouldn't be possible if it weren't for Dan Ebert's. The boing is basically how bouncy things are. In mathematical terms, this is basically the frequency of the kind of bounce or wave or overshoot. And so by default set to dampening is the rate of the dampening in which the kind of overshoot occurs. And the delay is the delay between each type of block of characters, which I'll explain in a second. So the delay is set to 0.15 of a second. So every 0.15 seconds, the next group of stuff will kind of appear. And I say stuff loosely, which I'll show you guys in a bit. Duration is the linear portion of the animation. So things are gonna animate at about 0.12 of a second and then it's going to oscillate and kind of overshoot. And so this is kind of like the average duration of a single unit here um, before the overshoot occurs. And of course we can randomize the timing of everything by clicking this and it's going to randomize um, kind of the order in which things animate in. And then we can also set a max random delay, right? And this is gonna um, pretty much randomize the delay. So if you want things to be really, really random, we can set it to five and things can kind of come in within five seconds apart. So it's a pretty large difference. Um, typically one works pretty well for randomizations and we have the ability to use markers. So let's say for whatever reason you're doing a voiceover or narration or whatever, and you want text to occur at a certain specific time, we can go ahead and uncheck randomized timing and we can set a marker by hitting the asterisk key on the numpad. So we can do one, two and three over here and the tool is smart enough to know, okay, the first text comes in here at this first marker and then second marker, it triggers the second word. And finally, the third marker will trigger the last word right here because we only have three texts. And the tool is smart enough to know that if we delete one of them, so we have three words, right? But if we only have two markers, it will show the first one. And then the last one here, it will show the remaining text. 
to type flow. So you can really fine tune this, control this, and really create very simple things without any keyframes to mess around with. You can just drag around some markers and everything will work dynamically. And markers will not work with randomized timing. And so I assume that if you're using markers, you kind of want things to go in sequential order, which is why you're using markers in the first place. So we can even disable the use of markers to begin with and ignore it altogether. And so here we have the position scale rotation opacity. These are some of the basic parameters of the tool. And here you can adjust in which direction things kind of occur. So by default, things are starting 75 pixels below and it's kind of animating up. We can change it to zero and we can add maybe 75 to the X axis. And then the text will kind of appear from the X direction, just like that. And so as you can see, we have pretty much full control over this whole thing right here. So we can play around with the position of where things are coming in from. We can even set it from the Z axis and create some 3D stuff like that. We can go to scale and by default, this is off right now. We can enable scale and that will start the scale from zero. So at the beginning, everything's gonna be zero in scale. It's gonna scale up 200%, just like that. And you get this really nice kind of bouncy, wobbly, bubbly look using the scale property. Um, and this is pretty much using text animators, which I'll kind of explain the whole grand scheme of things. So that's a scale. Same thing with rotation. We can enable the rotation. It can actually add a 45 degrees in the Z rotation. And that will give us kind of a different look here. So something like this, a little nice little wobble with um, a play in the Z rotation. And of course we have opacity, which is on by default and it's set to 0%, which means that things are gonna start at 0% and kind of fade in just like this. And this is the cool part of Typeflow. Now there are a lot of presets that kind of already do this. Overshoot is not something new within After Effects and people have applied Overshoot to text presets in the past. Um, but usually you're gonna find that they're, they're either based off words or they're based off characters. It's never really both and you can never really combine the two. And this is where Typeflow is a little bit different. So we have, right now everything's based on words for the most part. Um, but by default, per character animation is also turned on as well. So if we turn that off right here, everything is based off of words. So as you can see, welcome's gonna come in first and then two and then type flow. So things are pretty much in sync based on the words. Um, and this is where most presets kind of stop. They're either based on words or they're based on characters. Now we can actually kind of do both right here. So if we find a good spot right here. This is the welcome, right? So this is, this is the first layer um, so this is going to bring in um, the words one at a time. But if we enable per character animations, you're going to see that we get slight variation within the characters. And so this might be more pronounced if we disable the scale in the rotation as well. So we can just look at the position. So this is uh, with per character animations off where welcome comes in as a chunk and then two and then type flow. But if we enable per character animations, you can see that it kind of staggers everything. Um, it still brings in welcome together as a group, but it also staggers the individual characters. And as you can see, we still have the same exact controls. So we have the boing, the dampening, the delay, the duration, the randomize timing right here, which will bring in welcome and kind of just bring everything else in together as well. Um, and so basically you can harness the power of words and also combine per character animations and adjust the individual character position, character scale, character rotation, and the opacity all at an individual level. So this is very, very powerful. We can kind of harness it too. Now you're gonna have to play around with the timing a little bit because basically animating things based off words it's gonna be a little bit slower than animating things per characters, right? So if you're animating characters, you're gonna need things to be a little bit faster so it can kind of keep up with the animation of the words. And so you're gonna to need to kind of play and kind of tweak the per words as well as the per character animations right here. So let me kind of show you how this whole preset's broken down into. So this whole preset basically has four text animators the type flow intro secondary, which means this is the character, right? We have the intro primary, which is based off words. 
And so for the intro, you have two systems working to play. The primary system, which is the kind of parent system right here, which is by default controlling the words. So if you want to control words, this is the, the primary uh, text animator that you want to edit and kind of use. And then the second layer of animation is the per character animations. And the, so this will kind of control the per character at a character level of the intro. And so you have that. Now outro is the exact same thing. Outro has the same exact properties. It has the main primary layer, and then it has a secondary layer, which is the per character animation. And those settings will alter kind of what's going on at the outro. So you can speed that up, play around with it. So you can have things coming in one direction for the intro, and then have things kind of go in a different direction for the outro based on the settings that you have here, which is position, scale, rotation, opacity, and all that fun jazz. So this is essentially type flow. There's a lot of things you can do with it um, in 3D space. Now, I have another example here that's a multi-line, right? So this is another multi-line text. And if I apply type flow to it, so by default, it's based off of words. And so you're gonna see that basically things are gonna come in pretty much one at a time based on the words, just like this. And so this is cool. But like I said, um, it's kind of using a system, right? So if we go to text and we go to the type flow primary, let's say I don't want the primary system to be based off of words, right? We can go into the expression selector and instead of words, we'll select lines. So now what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna go ahead and disable this just to kind of show you. So now the first layer is not going to be based off words, it's gonna be based off lines. So it's gonna bring the first line first and then the second line. And then we can go into the secondary right here and make sure it's enabled. The secondary is right here. And by default, it's called per character animations, but technically this should be labeled as secondary animation or something like that. Um, and so now we have a combination of lines and then within those lines, we're getting our characters animating individually. So you're getting a completely different look. Now let's say you don't want the secondary animation to be based off of the characters. Well, we can go into the secondary animation, go to the expression selector and change characters to words, for example. So now our primary system is based off of the line. So it's gonna bring one line at a time. And the secondary animation is going to be based off of words. So you can kind of see it right here where it's kind of bringing the lines. And then within those lines, the words are coming in independently as well. And I added the basic stuff like position, scale, rotation, opacity. You can go into the property and actually add whatever you want, like a blur, a character offset, tracking. You can pretty much add whatever character animator you want to use, like a regular text animator, and play around there. Now, I have found that this preset works a little bit slower in After Effects CC 2014 and 2015. Um, it seems to be working pretty fast on 2018 and above. But nevertheless, it works just fine in After Effects CC 2014. Now, one little hack that I did find to really increase your render speeds, especially if you're not using kind of the 3D aspect of this preset, is to actually turn off the per character 3D right here. Now, when you do that, it's gonna go ahead and remove the X and Y and Z rotation. It's only gonna leave the Z rotation, which is basically just called rotation. And it's gonna unlink the expression and it's going to pretty much break the X and Y rotation. So this is not gonna work. So even if you, re-enable the per character animations, the X and Y will not link up. And that's just because, you know, After Effects removes this property. So um, the tool pretty much loses access to that property. But if you're not using those properties to begin with, it really speeds things up. Um, so if we disable the per character 3D animation, you can see that the rotation kind of disappeared. We still have access to the regular rotation right here. Um, but the render speeds, have seemed to speed up by quite a bit. I would say almost two times from my personal experience of testing. Um, it really does increase the uh, render speed. So if you find that it's running a little bit slower on your machine, try turning off the per character animations. So this is type flow for After Effects. Again, this is version one, so there may be some bugs I need to work out, but this is just a nice little preset to kind of get things going, get things moving, so you can customize it, tweak it to make it the way you want it to look like, and really just kind of get a nice starting point so you can create some nice, kind of simple animations, callouts, titles um, for your works. So check it out over at creativedojo.net. Again, this is a name your own price. Pay whatever you want for it. 
Feel free to support me and donate whatever you want if you find this preset very helpful. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website whether it's for a store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make the way you want it to look like without having any code knowledge required. They have awesome 25-hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it, guys. This is Tight Flow version one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I would love to hear your feedback, comments, suggestions, uh, feature requests. I do have some features in mind for the next version, including a reverse option, which will kind of reverse the order of the animation because right now things are kind of going from left to right. Um, but I would love to hear suggestions on things to improve on, to add to. Check out the Creative Dojo store for more presets, scripts, and tools like these. And if you guys like videos like this, subscribe down below, hit the bell icon to stay notified for all of our uploads. Until next time, guys, my name is Vincent Wynn from the Creative Dojo, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.